A warm welcome and good morning. The PG and Research Department of Zoology feel it a great pleasure to invite you all for this second day of the National Capacity Building Training Program on Marine Biodiversity and its Conservation. Yesterday, we had a glimpses of the marine world associated with the invertebrates, specifically sponges, corals, marine mollusks, and echinoderms. So now we move on to the world of marine vertebrates. So today's theme is diversity and conservation of marine vertebrates. We have three eminent speakers for the day. Dr. T. T. Ajit Kumar, Principal Scientist and Scientist in Charge, Peninsular and Marine Fish Genetic Resources, ICAR, National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resources, Kochi. Our second speaker for the day is Dr. Kakoli Banerjee. She is a senior assistant professor, Department of Biodiversity and Conservation of Natural Resources, Central University of Odisha, Odisha. Our third speaker of the day is Dr. K. Madhu Magesh, as a research fellow, Dugong Recovery Project, Wildlife Institute of India, Dehradun. Now, before we go into the presentation of our first resource person, I now request our senior professor, Dr. K. Sami Appan, to introduce our first resource person, Dr. T.T. Ajit Kumar. Over to Dr. Swami Appan. Good morning, one and all. Today's session on National Capacity Building Program is to deal with diversity and conservation of marine vertebrates. I'm happy to introduce the resource person for this session, Dr. D. T. Ajit Kumar. He's a principal scientist and a scientist in George Regional Center for NBG, NBFGR, Kochi. He did his bachelor and master degree in Annamalai University and a doctorate also at uh, Annamalai University, Chidambaram. He served as a technical officer for the period of five years in CMFRI. He served as a assistant professor in marine biology for the period of nine years in Annamalai University. Then he served as a senior scientist, ICAR, National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resource, Kuchi, for the period of three years. He guided 13 PhD students and now guiding three students. He organized different programs and around 20 programs he organized. He has completed 10 major and minor projects. Now he has three ongoing projects. He is a DOS force member of the Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Changes and also Board of Studies member Alapa University and Chatina Research Academy, Chennai. Now I request, now he will proceed with his presentation on marine ornamental pieces. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Samyapan, sir. A kind request to the participants. We request all the participants to mute your audio and video for better bandwidth and reception. Thank you. Now I request Dr. T.T. Ajit Kumar, sir, to take over. Ajit Kumar, sir, can you hear me? Uh, is, it, is it audible? Yeah, your voice is audible, sir. You can start sharing the screen. No, actually, I couldn't start the screen sharing. It is showing that the host asked you to start your video. I have given the share screening and all this thing, sir. Yeah, yeah. Now it came. Yeah.
Is it coming? I can't view the uh, only a voice I can hear, sir. No screen share. You can. Uh, give, I have given the option, sir. You can share the screen. Sir, I can see your screen, sir. Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shall start? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, before uh, my presentation, I have to thank uh, Dr. Tarnav Karase and his team for it. Having the wonderful opportunity to share the research finding of uh, uh, our institute on marine ornamental fishes. So, uh, I have also extending my sincere thanks and wishes to my friends, fellow speakers, uh, Dr. Armoga, uh, Dr. Balaji, Dr. Anand, uh, Dr. Deepak, Dr. Magesh, and Madhu. So, you all are aware about the ornamental fishes. Uh, Nowadays, wherever we are going, uh, we are seeing different uh, aquarium tanks. Uh, it is uh, helping to reduce our blood pressure. So, uh, most of the doctors, they are advising to keep uh, marine uh, ornamental aquarium because it is indirectly helping reduce our blood pressure. Also, it is a very good exercise for our eyes. So, earlier days, people used to share, used to keep only freshwater fishes due to the technological developments. Now, they have started uh, rearing marine ornamental fishes because of the technology development. You know that uh, synthetic salt is av available. So, the person who is sitting in non-coastal area, he can also rear the marine ornamental fishes. From, uh, for example, our uh, Delhi airport and most of the northern states, they are nowadays uh, keeping marine ornamental fishes. Uh, because I can rightly say this is the development of technology on aquarium techniques. So, before I am uh, going to the uh, particular topic on marine ornamentals, I can briefly tell what where we are stand on uh, Indian fisheries. So, Indian fisheries concerned, we are second largest in aquaculture production. Our seafood export is also gradually expanding from the last uh, 10 years. So now you all are aware that recently government of India has launched a program called Pradhan Mandiri Matsya Sambada Yojana. So through this program, government has uh, uh, ready to invest more than 20,000 crore. So among the 20,000, the state government have to share something and the beneficiaries, that is the private partners, they have to share the uh, share a share, uh, share something. So it is a very huge program launched by government of India. The participants, you are well aware about the uh, success stories of uh, green revolution and white revolution. India has succeeded. Now this is the time we have to uh, uh, go forward with the uh, Blue revolution. So in all sector, freshwater, marine, uh, we have a lot of opportunity to work. So adding color to the blue revolution, ornamental aquaculture is also playing, going to play a major role. Okay. So um, uh, ornamental fish is concerned. We have two groups. One is on freshwater, another one is on marine water. So freshwater, almost the trade is occupied by the exotic fishes. You know, all our gold, guppy, moly, all are exotic. However, it is domesticated in Indian condition. We have different, different, different population, breeding population. So um, uh, it is even though these fishes are exotic, however, we are, we are domesticated in India. In the case of marine ornamentals, see marine ornamentals, we have uh, domestic uh, domestic fishes, but uh, some we have uh, importing from other countries also. See, when compared to freshwater, the, the marine, we are getting more colors. Name a color, we can get it from ocean. Name a shape, we can get it from ocean. See, for example, our seagulls. 
for example our uh, starfish so different color different shape that is the advantage of marine ornamental aquaculture so you when compared to fruit fish aquaculture so india have the technology for sea bass we have the technology for pambano and cobia but the time uh, taken to reach the market table size of the particular fish is more than a year however however in the case of ornamental fishes particularly this clown fish it will take only 3 months time to reach the market table size so that is the good advantage for keeping marine ornamental aquaculture as a lively good option to the coastal community so if you are looking the trade of aquarium trade um, um, global scenario of aquarium trade so we are uh, our import and export turn around more around 1000 million us dollar but however here i want to emphasize one thing uh, india share on ornamental aquaculture is less than 1 percentage but we have lot of resources we are not utilizing in a proper way so sustainable utilization is most important in marine ornamental aquaculture as well as we have to promote the uh, what are the technology available on ornamental aquaculture that we have to promote to the uh, promote to the beneficiaries they have to come forward and establish so the ornamental aquaculture can help in two way one way on uh, conservation as uh, other way on a uh, very good promotion so i told that uh, technological development see wherever we are going we are talking about the uh, technology development from rocket science to uh, normal research where all the region we are uh, seeing the technological development see now the synthetic salt i so told likewise different aquarium equipment uh, denitrifier ozonizer protein skimmer wave maker so these all of the sophisticated instruments if you can establish this um, install these instruments in your aquarium tank with a synthetic salt so you can rear your fish anywhere in the world anywhere even non coastal area also you can nicely you can uh, build up this kind of aquarium so that is the demand for the ornamental aquarium so if you are seeing the business potential the day by day the demand demand is increasing if you are seeing the present supply it is too small however the demand is high but the future demand definitely it will be increasing for example uh, i want to emphasize one thing actually some few years back uh, the honorable supreme court has given a judgment uh, in the apartment systems pet animals are not allowed to keep so you know that our day by day life is very tensioned and uh, we are making ourselves as busy so at least we want some relaxation so people used to keep uh, some pet animals dog cat birds like that so many things they are rearing but however uh, it is using some i producing some noises so um, uh, the neighbor those who are not interested on this they are making complaint and all so finally it went to the court and the honorable supreme court has given a judgment you are not allowed to keep pet animals in apartment system so there is the only alternate way for uh, relaxing ourselves is ornamental fishes that's why uh, i am telling that demand will be Uh, increase day by day because uh, this uh, um, uh, hobby is uh, enhancing the uh, involvement of the hobby is more and the number of hobby is increasing day by day so definitely there should be a future demand so already demand is there then the government has launched a new program called the new revolution so definitely i am sure this sector will uh, grow further and uh, um, uh, make a breakthrough in india so this was the scenario in some 10 15 years back there is a there was a poor fish breeder he used to breed the, uh, the fishes in his farm of backyards and he started selling the fishes you see a cycle uh, by uh, by his own bicycle this was the scenario earlier but now see the technological development this is the present scenario the, uh, this is not uh, uh, emphasis of promoting aquarium technology however this the uh, us government they took initiative to conserve the biodiversity they have launched a concept on marine uh, sorry mobile aquarium so this uh, vehicle used to travel the city one day on 20 to 25 kilometers so as a part of biodiversity conservation they are uh, introduced this concept so why i for included this slide here is this is the um, uh, technological development in uh, aquarium keeping so this all are the development so i told that we have two group of fishes one is on fresh water and another one is marine fresh water we have the indigenous group our own uh, denisonian 
Sony, our own Pundia species, we, it have uh, very good demand. Um, this is also the again the freshwater uh, indigenous fishes we have documented from uh, Western Ghats, uh, Western Ghats region. So here what you are seeing is the <coughs> sorry chichilit chichilit uh, this uh, discuss Oscar and the Angel. These all are the uh, exotic freshwater fishes. However, India we have domesticated all these fishes. Several breeding population available since it is attached with the livelihood of the most of the people. For example, you are aware about the Plathur fish market daily lakhs and lakhs rupees we are uh, getting through this. Um, aquarium trade in Chennai, but however, due to this uh, COVID-19 and uh, lockdown, the uh, beneficiary's life, life is, uh, um, uh, life is uh, I say, a question mark because of there is uh, uh, no buyer. There is due to the lack of buyer and the, uh, due to the lack of transport, uh, the whole Plathur uh, market got shut down and there is uh, no movement at all. So uh, this freshwater, uh, so we have two groups. One is on fresh, um, on, uh, indigenous as well as the uh, exotic. So indigenous, we have our own resources in Western Ghat and Northeast. Exotic, we have um, more than uh, 200, 300 variants and uh, uh, species we have imported from different countries and we have domesticated in different regions of the uh, nation. So Arona, it is a very popular fish, aquarium fish. You all are aware the below one, that red color fish, it cost around more than five lakhs rupees because people have a wrong belief that if you are keeping the Arona in your home, you will uh, get money and your things will be succeeded like that. But of course, it is against to science. However, people are believing this, uh, 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 keeping Arona in their home. Again, it is also a exotic fishes, but the fingerling size fishes used to come to India through uh, Calcutta as well as some importers also there through import as well as some grey market. It is entering in India and uh, uh, after fattening, they are bringing to the market and it is getting good, uh, uh, lively good to the uh, people, those who are in, engaged in this. So, um, I uh, told that this is the vast mean people have a wrong belief. But however, it is a very good demand. So since it is attached with the livelihood, government is also not taking any initiatives. Uh, so very good demand fish, even though it is uh, exotic, but uh, very good demand is there in India. So you know, all are aware about this uh, goldfish. Goldfish, actually, why I have put this slide is this caracious aratus, it is a single strain. Goldfish have a single strain caracious uh, aratus. But however, uh, whatever you are seeing is all are caracious strain only, but according to the taker's interest, according to the uh, hobbyist uh, interest, they are genetically as well as they are um, um, manually, they are modifying fin, fin extended, tail extended, uh, eye bulged, uh, head bulged, like that, different varieties they are make, bringing out to the, uh, based on the um, uh, aquarist uh, demand. So, but the science is, if you can check the uh, gen gene of all these fishes, it falls under the single gene caracious aratus. These all are the different uh, genetically modified and, um, and uh, 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 crossbreed uh, uh, cross gold, goldfish strains. So again, this is also an interesting fish called the glassfish. It is uh, uh, Parambasis uh, ranga. This is actually, see, the, co the cost of this uh, original uh, glassfish is just 5 rupees. It is plenty available in our freshwater bodies. So according to the takers' interest, what this uh, trade is they are doing, they are simply injecting the color powders in the body of the uh, fishes. For example, uh, they are uh, taking a red color powder or green color powder. They are mixing with the Dato ink and simply injecting the fishes. A trained guy, if you will inject um, and, uh, 100 fish, uh, more than 90 percent of the uh, fishes are surviving. Only thing the trained uh, uh, person is required to inject the fishes. Otherwise, we have to face a lot of mortality. So um, this is the seasonal business. Actually, during the school vacation season, these students, those who are having 50, 100 rupees, they simply uh, take a bottle, glass bottle, and uh, procuring two, three fishes. Some 20, 30 rupees, they are getting two, three fishes, and they are putting in 
uh, keeping this as a home aquaria. So uh, this fish can survive and this they retain its color for another one month. So automatically the school will get open. The student car beast we he started forgetting this thing. So this is but of course I can say this genetically modification and this ejecting color thing all these things are uh, ethically against to ethics. But however, as I told in the beginning, since it is attached with the lively good, uh, government is also supporting this kind of thing. So this is, the, uh, you know that you all heard about the piranha, piranha fish. Actually, piranha it is a highly carnivorous fish. Mm. It is recently reported from our natural water bodies. Actually, India government of India has the license for importing 92 fishes. Officially, government has given license. So, in Chennai also, one of my good friend, Dr. Sadish, is a, a excellent um, an, uh, trader in uh, um, ornamental aquaculture. Um, and, uh, he have the license. He have the license. He is, but particularly, he is concentrating with the marine only. So, in the name of uh, uh, Paku. Actually, the among the 92 list, Paku is one among them. So, in the name of Paku, this uh, trade is they are importing uh, uh, piranha fish. They are importing the piranha fish in the name of Paco. So it came to India only for aquarium purposes, but um, and, uh, intentionally or non intentionally, but now it is uh, available in our uh, natural water bodies. It is a serious threat to our uh, biodiversity, it is spoiling our uh, natural biodiversity. So uh, the next serious important issue is this uh, sucker mouth catfish. You know all those who are maintaining aquarium in your home, you are well aware about this fish because whoever keeping this goldfish, guppy, moly, angel, they used to put one sucker mouth catfish. Actually, this is the scavenger fish. It used to uh, consume all the uneaten and waste material available in your fish tank. So they used to keep this as a scavenger in your tank. So if you are keeping a tank with a some 10 goldfish used to put one uh, sucker mouth cat. This fellow used to grow very fast uh, than compared to its partner, other, uh, other host fishes. So once it reaches the maximum size, the hobbyist, what they will do, because it used to agitate the water and disturb the other fishes, so the hobbyist used to throw, instead of killing this fish, he simply thrown the fish near to the water body um, on living condition. So very pathetically, recently, from River Kaveri, the breeding population of this fish was reported. So again, this is a serious threat to our aquarium, uh, our natural uh, water body as well as the biodiversity. Actually, this is not a carnivorous fish. However, it will spoil the habitat of our own fish. So again, it is a threat to our uh, biodiversity. So we have to come across all these things. So why I am telling all these issues? So once if India have a breeding technology for our own indigenous fishes, we can satisfy the hobbyist with our indigenous fishes. No need to bring all these kind of things from uh, uh, foreign countries and despoil our, our own habitat. So again, the serious threat is uh, collection of endangered species and the poaching. You all are aware that seagulls, seagulls, pipefish and golothurian, sea cucumber, all are falls under schedule because over exploitation is there so the government uh, put this fish on the red list so now you are not allowed to catch this fish however people are uh, collecting this even forest uh, forest and the government is taking lot of effort so poaching uh, poaching is also a serious threat to uh, threat to our uh, biodiversity so this is i told about this park Piranha, piranha fish and sucker mouth cat, like that. These all are the fishes. See how beautiful this are. This is not available in Indian water. However, these fishes are easily entering our uh, market through uh, through import, through illegal import, through illegal import. But however, even though if these fishes are entered into our ocean or marine environment, it can't survive because you know that uh, ocean it is a very vast water, water body. So far, there is no report of uh, marine exotic ornamental fishes in our water body. That is the very good thing uh, so far uh, we are maintaining. So then 
destructive fishing practices. So actually I told that there is a very good demand. So based on, uh, because of the demand, the collectors, the fish collectors, they are adapting some illegal fishing practices. For example, cyanide application, you know that cyanide is a poison. So what they are doing, this collector, they, he simply dissolve the cyanide into the uh, known quantity of water and applying to the uh, coral reef region. Actually, this marine ornamental fishes, we have more than 8,000 kilometer uh, coastal area. However, these ornamental fishes are available only with the reef region, coral reef region. So you know that there is a high tide and low tide. So during low tide, you can, it is visible to see the fishes. So what this collector will do, he used to apply so uh, trace quantity of cyanide in the uh, near coral reef area. So um, immediately the fishes got stunned. So what this fellow will do, he will collect the target fish, which one is target fish, target in the sense which fish get most uh, price in the market, that is this target fish, he used to collect, pick that fish and he is ignoring the rest of the fish, egg and larvae. So it is a, again a serious issue for uh, threatening our biodiversity. Then now we are talking about the climate change, climate change, wherever we are going, we are talking about the climate change and we are facing the real issues due to the climate change. See, this is uh, the Cataractis magnifica, a tentacle sea anemone, see how it's beautiful, see, but uh, this photograph we have took from Lakshadweep during the normal days. However, when the seawater temperature was, SST was elevated just to, this is when the temperature was 29 degree, this we took, the temperature was 32 degree. So, when the temperature got elevation, the uh, animals, it lose its uh, sous and the lay and the associated organisms, the clownfish and uh, this uh, sea anemone have very good symbiotic relation. It is started migrating from its host. So, this is also a serious threat. Again, this is the tridagna. Um, it is also by, um, a sensitive organism, endangered. So, again, this is also more uh, uh, sensitive with the climate change. So, because of elevated temperature, it is losing its uh, color and it is losing its uh, and so these are all the serious issues uh, we are facing uh, over man-made as well as natural so if you are seeing the marine ornamental fish resources india has blessed with four supplying center we are very happy, very blessed very much blessed we have our own gulf of manar from rameshwaram to uh, 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 then gulf of kach in gujarat Andaman, Nicobar Islands, and Lakshadweep Islands. So these four uh, regions are the major supply center for marine ornamental fishes. However, uh, in Malvan coast, as well as in Kerala coast, uh, near to uh, Binyam and uh, in between uh, Kerala, uh, Trivandrum and uh, Kanyakumari, some coral patches are there. There are also some ornamental fishes are uh, reported there recently. So these are the uh, coral reefs. So uh, if you are, uh, this fish immediately goes to the uh, branches of this coral, so it is very difficult to catch the fish. So this, uh, this fish photograph we have documented from Lakshadweep. So now what is the advantage? What is the advantage? What is the prospects of ornamental aquaculture? I already told that SIBA, CMFRI, we have the technology for SIBA, uh, Pambano and Cobia, but however, it will take a, not less than a year to reach marketable size. However, the ornamental fishes, we can breed, um, and, uh, re, uh, market the fish within 3-4 months interval. For example, very good example is our uh, clownfish. Then habitat destruction, I told that uh, if we can breed the fish and we can uh, bring the hatchery bred uh, fish to the market, we can avoid habitat destruction. Then over exploitation, seagulls is the best example. If you are continuously harvest your uh, natural resource, you will lose it. So over exploitation can be stopped. Selective harvesting. Selective harvesting means, see, it is an interesting thing here. Actually, among the marine armament, the fishes almost all the male fishes are more beautiful than the female so this collector the fish collector the poor fisherman he doesn't know which one is male which one is female he used to collect which one is more beautiful 
so in a particular system if we continuously collect the male fishes at the end the reproductive strategy will be getting failed so that is called selective or this uh, harvesting so these are all the uh, advantages of ornamental aquaculture habitat we can stop habitat destruction we can stop over exploitation we can stop selective harvesting then if you are taking the freshwater ornamental fish trade uh, guppy moli go uh, angel ross all of the top end fishes in the case of marine these all are the top end fishes uh, damsel uh, cardinal uh, parrot surgeon lion uh, ross butterfly angel trigger and cloud this another one is the allah fish that quran angel so these all are the fishes having major role top ten fishes playing major role in the aquarium trade so is it possible to all the big fishes in captivity is it possible to breed no it is somewhat difficult because based on the reproductive strategies we have categorized the fishes into four group one is egg depositor one is egg scatter and another one is mouth breeder and the last one is live bearer so egg depositor india have very good technology see the fish used to lay the egg on any hardy substratum so everything happened before our eyes so breeding is successful in the case of egg depositor egg scattering group it is somewhat very difficult because we don't know where the female used to lay the egg whether the uh, male fellow will fertilize or not so india we don't have the uh, technology for uh, egg scattering however recently some success has been obtained in uh, angel fishes in foreign countries then mouth brooder it is a interesting fish the female used to lay the egg and the male fellow engulf they can keep its mouth and till hatch out it won't accept any feed so that is the interesting thing so india we have the successful technology live bearers again it is a interesting animal the female seagulls used to lay its egg on the pouch of the male seagulls so the male give birth so these all are the four group so india in india um, uh, few organization like central marine fisheries research institute uh, anamala university and few fisheries university and recently the national bureau of fish genetic resources where i am associating that institute also entered in the marine ornamental aquaculture as a part of gem blossom conservation so we have also the technology for this uh, uh, this group of uh, organisms so if you are taking i told that india have a well developed technology for the clownfish clownfish because it is a very demanded fish in the market so you all are aware that some few years back there was a cartoon movie on finding nemo finding nemo so after once that movie came, uh, came appeared in the screen people started uh, craze on this uh, uh, clownfish it have a symbiotic relationship with the sea anemone it have a very very good peculiar character that is called protanthus hermaphrodism here protanthus hermaphrodism means by birth all these fishes are subadult male so if you are putting two fishes in a particular in a tank automatically it will become pair the, the the female can uh, change its sex as male so that is the advantage so if you can extend the technology to a poor farmer he don't know uh, which one is male or which one is female there is no need of sex identification and all any two you can accommodate auto automatically you can get uh, pair that is the advantage so uh, uh, this fish is more uh, farmer friendly so these all are the different species of clown fishes uh, we have the technology and and these all are the young ones pro produced in our hatchery as well as the hatchery at uh, Adamala University Marine Biology uh, Department. So these all are the different generation. At present, in my knowledge, we have the uh, FI generation of clownfish of this Ocellaris percola, Arbibrian sibe, and this Premnus spiculatus in uh, our country. So uh, from the beginning, one slide I have shown that, uh, that from the single Will strain of characters are at us. Goldfish strain we brought to different variants. Likewise, now people have started working with the marine also. It is uh, they started with the clownfish. Uh, so now this there is a demand for this uh, uh, variant clowns, the designer clown also. So keeping this in mind, when I was uh, working in Anamala University, we had done an experiment. Actually, here if you can visit uh, carefully, see this fish is Ocellaris. 
the genus is same, but the species is the difference. This ocellar is, this black marking is missing. But however, see, this purple, this marking is very visible. So we try to crossbreed this. There is nothing, there is no hormone, nothing we have used, but uh, natural spawning only we tried. But we failed more than two and a half years. After two and a half years, we got a successful pair and the, uh, we got the egg clutch. Egg clutch here and they given birth and we got young ones and we have done some trial analysis of the F1 generation and the, it showed that F1 have uh, some good color than its parents, than its parents, and uh, we published these findings in aquaculture, aquaculture research. So what now you are seeing is damsel fishes, damsel fishes. So this also have a very good demand. India has the technology for this, but however, when compared to cloud, uh, the mouth size of this fish is too small. Uh, so and, uh, now that in Bharatidasan University. Uh, there is one professor, Dr. Sandanan, he and his team, they are developing technology for this copy port culture. So that comes on mass, mass scale. Definitely we can succeed with this, uh, upgrade the production of this damsel, damsel fishes. So this is the cardinal. I told that um, this is the best example for mouth breeder. So during my stay in Anamal University, we bred the fishes. So later only we came. This is a exotic fishes. So we wind up the thing and we handed over the things to the uh, supplier. Uh, supplier. So this this is a dirty uh, pack, uh, pseudochromis. This also have a very good demand. So first time we bred these fishes using some carbon. Actually, it would take more than a year to uh, getting gonad maturity. So what we have done, we have done an experiment with uh, carbon injection and we got succeeded. So uh, this is another one uh, important uh, ornamental fishes playing major role. So now I want to emphasize here what NBMC are. Actually, you know that uh, in India, we have eight fisheries institute under uh, ICR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, eight one in uh, CMFRI, CBA, CAFT, uh, CAFE in Mumbai, Central Institute of Fisheries. Likewise, we have the institute at Lucknow, uh, National Bureau of uh, Fish Genetic Resources. Actually, uh, we used to say, the other fisheries institute are working for to, today fisheries and we are working for the tomorrow fisheries because our main bandit is conservation, germplasm conservation. So that's why we are climbing. So I told there is a very good demand for clownfish. So the most of the demand is met out by the wild cut. So what we have done is we established a facility at Thane. Thane as a part of the program on establishing marine ornamental village at Maharashtra. It is a project funded by Department of Forest Mangrove Foundation. So through this project, we established a master facility. There we stopped the 10 different species of clownfish. We are producing continuously the metamorphosed tangons. We are supplying to the beneficiaries. Uh, beneficiaries identified by the government of Maharashtra Mangrove Foundation. So they will rear another two months and they are marketing it. Marketing, we have linked some channels through Empada. Empada, we have linked the channels, Marine Protectors for Development Authority. So this uh, beneficiary selection and the whole uh, program is uh, for, sponsored by the Mangrove Foundation, Government of uh, Maharashtra. This is just one year old project. Now our beneficiary units, units are ready in Thane district of Maharashtra. So once this lockdown is lifted, we will stock our own fishes. So this, this is the uh, inside the facility of the catcher NBFGR established at uh, uh, Thane district. So I think you heard about the Lakshadweep. It is the 36 island scattered in Arabian Sea. So the main livelihood of the people is tuna, tuna and the uh, copra, uh, coconut. So they don't have any other alternative livelihood option. So uh, um, uh, this Anamala University, they launched a program with the support of uh, Ministry of Earth Science, CMLRE. Uh, so followed that recently DBT, Department of Biotechnology, have sanctioned the, uh, a major project to my own institute, ICR, NBFG, National Bureau of Genetic Resources. So we established a facility called Gem Blossom Resource Center for Marine Ornamental Invertebrate. So I told that there is a very good demand for ornamental fishes. I told that clownfish have the association with the sea anemone. So the hobbyist prefer clownfish and sea anemone. So clownfish, we have the hatchery 
technology. So hatchery brand young ones are coming to the market. However, still we are depending uh, natural resource for our uh, sea animal. Sea animal. So keeping this, we are trying to uh, attempting breeding the uh, uh, sea animal. Actually, Actually, sea animal sexually and asexually it is breeding. So we are both the way we are attending through our hatchery. Besides, see you know that uh, among this uh, uh, like this ornamentals varieties of ornamental shrimps are available in the market. So all these ornamental shrimps it is coming from wild cut only. So as a part of gem blossom conservation, we, now we are on the uh, we are uh, uh, trying to. Uh, developed technology for the hatchery production of these ornamental shrimps. So we conducted several exploration, uh, several surveys, and we brought, uh, we got uh, so more than 15 species of ornamental shrimps based on the priority, based on the market demand. We stocked a few fishes, and we are bringing the, uh, trying to bring out these fishes in the aquarium trade. So to, uh, here I want to share one happy uh, uh, success we achieved during our exploration actually we uh, got two new species of ornamental shrimp and we have since we collected the shrimp from agati uh, we named it as a uh, agati and uh, another one shrimp since the agati island is uh, uh, scattered in the arabian sea we named as a uh, arabian sea so so we have i am very happy on uh, our institute got uh, help to enhance the biodiversity catalog of our nation. So both the species are new to uh, science and followed these two species are new records, new distributional records to this Lismeta Kochi and the Thor both are new distributional records to Indian waters. So what then uh, likewise see we here we have uh, reported a yeah, new association of a parasite with another one ornamental shrimp so the finding has been flashed by current science on their uh, wrapper page so now what we have done is actually uh, through our uh, exploration and the taxonomy work we brought this uh, uh, fishes into the uh, domain but uh, uh, after uh, publication now we are trying to bring in bring out this fish for ornamental aquarium trade. So when, uh, once we standardize this technology, the, technolo pa 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 the technology package will be extended to the islanders as the uh, uh, livelihood option. So uh, we got some success with the 50 percentage. So the species store convenience is uh, we have got more than 50 percentage is successful. Uh, this is the species new, uh, new distributional record in India. Very good demand in the aquarium trade. More than 1,200 rupees per single species we are getting. So we are trying to bring this to aquarium trade to the Lakshadweep Islanders. Another one species called the Brief Carpalis. This is known to aquarium trade, but uh, already this species is available in our Gulf of Manara and all. So we are say, since it is heavily exploited for aquarium trade, we are trying to breed this as a part of gem blossom conservation. As another one is called Nathophyllum Americanum. This also we have bred and we are uh, uh, bring out uh, this to aquarium through upscaling the technology. Then life feed is the most important for uh, breeding all the fishes. I told that uh, we have a very good facility in Bharatidasan University being operated by my good friend Dr. Sandhanam. So um, uh, some um, uh, all the time it is very difficult to getting uh, life feed because uh, some crash uh, due to the um, uh, high temperature and due to rainy seasons we used to lose our uh, uh, stock. So we are trying to bring out some artificial formulated feed also. So we have succeeded with the different feeds. So we are facing some problem with the uh, disease also. So initially we treated with the fishes with the, what is called the, some antibiotics. However, later part we have tried the fishes with the, some uh, coastal herbals. For example, this uh, mangrove herbals. We are treating the infected fishes with the different uh, mangrove leaves, root, uh, road, but however, we succeeded with the exocaria agalaca.
given promising result. The fishes, those who treated with this exocaria agalaka, uh, given promising result. And because the F1 generation obtained through this uh, treated fish, you have disease resistant capacity. That is the advantage for uh, this uh, mangrove, uh, mangrove herbals. Then this is the filtration set setup. This is the canister filter used for almost all the aquarium. This is the biological filter we have developed by our own team. You know that the scrap product of fish is uh, ammonia. So if the load will increase, it will spoil the fish kelp. So uh, through this beneficial bacteria, nitrosomonas, it will convert the ammonia into nitrate and nitrate. So this is the, uh, another one advantage. We have standardized the packing technology. Actually, whatever we produce, we have to market it. So uh, transportation and packing is most important. So um, uh, using low-cost technology, just using the flow oil, we have standardized the technology for uh, packing and transportation also. Uh, yeah, this finding we have published in uh, aquaculture, uh, aquaculture Research Magazine. So we are continuously, our institute is now continuously giving training, uh, capacity building to the beneficiaries. I told that uh, as a part of establishment of Mangrove Village, this is the uh, capacity building training program we are giving. So this is the one package we have developed. Actually, if you are supplying hatchery bread young ones, if you are beneficiary, you can establish 50,000 uh, <laughs> investing 50,000 and establish a hatchery, he can get easily more than 7,000 rupees per month. So th these all are the uh, opportunities uh, available in the aquaculture, opportunities available in the aquaculture. Actually, it is woman friendly, less production cost, production cost, even we can make it into a very big way also. But however, we have some concern also, but uh, very uh, small concern, very simple concern we can come across because uh, less attention we got on marine, marine ornamental when compared to food fish aquaculture. Then there is no coordination between institute because the, an, uh, CMFRA doesn't know what Anomaly University is doing. Anomaly University doesn't know what uh, uh, Fisheries University is doing. So we have to um, uh, come across all this issue. We have to um, uh, coordinate so that we can come. Definitely, I have strong hope through this blue revolution. Uh, a lot of scopes are there. So we can uh, coordinate and we can bring out uh, new things on the fishery sector. Again, some issues are there. So recently, some one year back, the Ministry of Environment has uh, uh, issued a GO. Uh, you are not allowed to keep fish on your home. You are not here uh, to fish in captivity like that. But in the other way, the other Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, they are promoting uh, aquaculture and ornamental aquaculture. So issues, rules and regulations are there, but we have to uh, make it possible to bring uh, good outcome through uh, I mean, uh, following these rules and regulations. So what is needed? There, um, in my personal uh, intention is my personal opinion is we need a very good quarantine national quarantine facility in our country because we got, you are most of you are aware that uh, RGCA Rajiv Gandhi Center for Aquaculture they have a quarantine facility for this Pines Vanami and uh, Topines Vanami so that uh, it is in uh, Chennai so whoever uh, importing uh, Vanami to the country all it goes to the uh, where an uh, RGCA quarantine facility. After that only, it is moving to out. Likewise, we have a common quarantine facility, at least for one in uh, East Coast, one in West Coast, or in major uh, metropolitan cities, so we can uh, solve most of the problems. So, uh, in my knowledge, these all of the institutes have playing major role. They have to uh, link together, and they have to take the sector to the uh, uh, forward. So, and uh, even though we are working for the livelihood and the conservation, some students, those who are, at, are registered their PhD and uh, uh, MPhil programs earlier, and um, uh, so uh, for their uh, growth, we brought out some publication through these programs. Uh, so these all are the publications. So this was flashed by some media also. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, friends. Uh, I think uh, it may be useful to you. I'm sure I will not uh, uh, get you bored because most of the slides are uh, most beautiful and uh, colorful. So I have a request to all the participants. This is my mail ID. Those who have any doubt, 
request or any clarification i am requesting you kindly mail me uh, you, i will uh, immediately give you reply or you can contact me through organizer i am happy to share my uh, experience with you um, uh, my apology actually i have a uh, my own institute review meeting is scheduled at 10:30 so i got to go uh, so one hour Or two fast questions i can reply so kindly uh, ignore thank you very much thank you dr tarnavkar sir and his uh, colleague for the wonderful opportunity thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, i'll just uh, just a couple of questions is there any relation between fish pigmentation and fish feed yeah definitely definitely actually see i mean uh, the fish if you are keeping in the aquarium for quite long it will lose its uh, color so if you want to maintain the color feed is most important feed and light okay so some astringent like uh, substances you have to mix with the feed always we are recommending live feed always live feed if you are providing live feed no need to give any uh, additives or something otherwise uh, uh, color is depends with, uh, uh, the feed play major role with the uh, maintaining the color what kind of precautions and permissions are taken for collecting marine fishes for aquarium use no 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 actually see you are not allowed to collect anything from the uh, reef region because reefs are falls under schedule schedule one so again this delpha pannar it is biosphere reserve so you are not allowed to collect but however you can collect from park bay region i told that uh, in in between rameshwaram sorry in between uh, trivandrum and kanyakumari lot of coral catches are there there you can collect but inside the coral reef region andaman or lakshadweep you are not allowed to, but lot of illegal practices are going we have to for research purpose we have to get permission from the forest department of the concerned state thank you sir for answering the questions i think participants would have cleared with their doubts uh, now over to dr tirunavakar sir hello uh, uh, respected uh, ajit sir uh, for having uh, participated and given a lecture on uh, ornamental fishes uh, in spite of your busy schedule uh, sir has emphasized uh, the overall spectrum of ornamental fishes eggs, especially freshwater even though in the marine uh, sector Uh, and uh, he mentioned the impact of climate changes uh, bleaching of uh, the animals and uh, how the clone fishes and uh, uh, the damsel fishes and the new species record and new to indian waters so many of the things uh, he has been emphasized here in this uh, uh, platform uh, thank you very much sir uh, having participated in our uh, program uh, for your uh, valuable lecture thank you thank you thank you tanakar sir for the wonderful opportunity thank you sir thank you dear participants now we move on to the second session of this morning coastal odisha the area of confluence of any river and the sea which is a deltaic region is a fascinating ecosystem also an intertidal area this is criss crossed by estuaries river creek and creek list based on the habitat ecological condition certain pockets of odisha coast have become the famous nesting sites of sea turtles looking for undisturbed net nesting sites and beaches the world's attention is focused on the conservation of sea turtles we are enlightened to have admitted us this morning dr kakoli banerji senior assistant professor Department of Biodiversity and Conservation of Natural Resources Central University of Odisha to give a presentation on the sea turtles now i request dr m shashikala assistant professor of zoology to introduce our resource person dr kakoli banerji good morning to one and all present here i take this opportunity to welcome and introduce our resource person Dr. Kakoli Banerji, working as a senior assistant professor in the Department of Biodiversity and Conservation of Natural Resources, Central University of Odisha, and behalf of Zoology Department, Dr. Ambedkar Government Arts College. Ma'am, I received a PhD from Marine Biodiversity Conservation, Climate Change, and Carbon Sequestration. 
a tremendous contribution in research field. She joined WWF India as a project officer to carry out a research program on livelihood marine biodiversity conservation from 2003 to 2007. Ma'am received a DST Women Scientist Award in 2007 from Government of India, a research associate under Ministry of Earth Science in 2009, and also PAN Fellowship and Eparatus Fellowship from University of San Diego. Ma'am visited as a guest faculty in several universities. Under Ma'am guidance, 15 students awarded MPhil degree and two students awarded PhD degree and four students are pursuing PhD. Her credit about 176 research papers have been published, uh, published in peer-reviewed, reputed national and international journals and author of 16 books of postgraduate student. Dr. Kakuli Banerjee Ma'am as presently a member of several committees like the WWF International Indian Association for Cultivation of Science, Society for Indian Ocean Studies in New Delhi, and Ma'am as an academic council member and board of study members of Central University of Odisha. Warm greeting Ma'am. Now I call upon Dr. Kakuli Banerjee Ma'am to deliver her valuable presentation. Welcome Ma'am, thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, I now request Ma'am to take over. Is the screen visible? Your screen is visible, ma'am. You can come. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Dr. Sushikala and uh, the team of uh, Dr. Ambedkar Government College. I also thank uh, our uh, uh, Dr. Thiru for inviting me for this uh, wonderful session of the National Capacity Building Program. Uh, today, I'll be speaking something on the research topic that has been carried out by some of the scholars of our uh, university. Participants, please bear with us. There's a technical issue. It will be sorted out. Dear participants, please bear with us. We have some connectivity issues. The program will start in a few minutes.
Ma'am, your screen is visible. Uh, am, am I audible now? Yeah, audible. Your screen is also visible. Okay. Now I think the connection was uh, got cut. Yeah. No problem, ma'am. You can carry yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as I was discussing, so we have uh, two seven species all around the globe, excepting the Kemp Ridley and the flatback turtle, which are actually actually restricted to Gulf of Mexico and the northern Australia and the New Guinea islands. so apart from that this a group of turtles which are known as particularly the bale odisha has been i mean the coastal areas as were uh, given the introduction the coastal areas are certain areas which have a wide global i mean which are famous for unique places in our global geography and it has a wide uh, variety of the uh, ecosystems coastal ecosystems like the mangroves the coral reefs lagoons sea grasses salt marshes and as well as the estuaries now as per the data of center for coastal zone management and coastal shelter belt chennai the coastal coastline of india which is around 5 say 5 7515 uh, kilometers it harbors a specialized marine ecosystems and orissa having the two major nesting grounds of the sea turtles Bitter Kanika and Rushikala has made this state a uh, unique in in the in the world. Now, shorelines are actually prone to many type of uh, accretions as well as erosions, and as per this state suggests that I mean the state wise uh, 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 the uh, data suggests it is almost forty uh, percent of the of our coasts, particularly West Bengal, Pondicherry, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. It's already under erosion, and almost forty percent is under accretion. So this erosion and accretion is a is a brother and sister which goes which uh, holds hand a uh, hand in hand and it walks along, which also gives to the different coastal geomorphology of the different states. now on that basis we have in our state the devi and the rushkulla rivers are very much uh, the eshrain complex which is actually a home to the olive ridley turtles and because of that odisha with a coastline of 485 kilometers has been the major nesting ground where aribada takes place you know that aribada is basically a group nesting of the females that occurs in the coast now if you look into the landforms and features which i was discussing tamil nadu andhra pradesh odisha bengal west bengal all and kerala karnataka maharashtra and gujarat if you consider both the coast we have different type of the landforms which are basically very much helpful for particularly marine species they also provide shelter feeding habitat roosting grounds with nesting grounds and it's a wonderful uh, juvenile rejuvenating center for all the marine species now coming to sea turtle diversity in india now particularly olive ridley lepidochelys olivacea green turtles the chilonis midas hawksbill turtle Erit eritmochelys imbricata loggerhead turtle carata carata and leatherback dermochelys scoriacea are one of the very few species which are the which occur, whose nesting occurs in the coastal orissa and the gahir mata coast so these two stay these two particular areas uh, are also you can say are having a religious uh, outlook in this particular area according to the hindu culture they are being called karma avatar and which is actually the incarnation of lord vishnu and you know that in orissa we have the puri festival where lord jagannath is being thought to be an incarnation of uh, of of the of the god so together with the religious culture and as well as the uh, scientific uh, scenario both the things put together we have the signe which which we have a lot of conservation aspects that are taking place in the particular species of lepidochelys olivacea that is the olive ridley turtles whose breeding basically occurs between november and december or sometimes it shifts to january even and particularly in the in the lower stretch of the of our india but in the chennai kanchipuram coast we have it during particular the december and april so Orissa and Andhra are basically a good migratory route for the turtles. Now, this is a, a, a the pics of the different turtles as you can see: the flatback sea turtle, green sea turtle, olive ridleys, Kemp ridleys, then leatherback turtles and loggerhead turtles, which are generally found in the all over the world. 
Now, what is why we are studying this? This is a, the, what is the significance of the sea turtles? Sea turtles, particularly, they help in they they keep jellyfish under control, which maintains a healthy fish stock in the oceans. The green turtles help in uh, removing the seagrass biomass and preventing sediment formation. The uh, uh, some of the species like hawksbill they feed on sponges in the coral reef ecosystem, and they open crevices for other marine life to live in. Turtles are often uh, 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 give the unhatched eggs and the eggshells and the fluids that decompose during their nesting. In they they add fertilizer to the sandy substratum of the coast. Now coming to the common uh, zoological classification of turtles, we have it basically comes under two important families: Chelonidae, which are with scutes, and the Dunnochelae, which are scutless. I have given you the diagram on the right hand side that what actually scutes mean, and this scute nomenclature gives rise to your different types of species identification. Out of that, if you can see that I have given you the uh, red, red data book as well as the IUCN red list of all the five turtles which are found in India. So it is already endangered, vulnerable, and critically endangered species. So there are a lot of researches going on uh, on these sea turtles, and they have now come up. The whole world has come up. to evaluate spatially and biologically distinct groups of marine turtles with their regional management units in every corner of the country of the country as well as on the world now what happens exactly the turtles when they lay eggs is a life cycle you can see on the left hand bottom the the eggs are laid on the uh, on the uh, sandy substratum you can see it in the over here and then the small turtles uh, which are uh, which are baby ba babies which are released they automatically you know eggs are laid in north south direction always they always maintain the magnetic meridian of the earth so because of that immediately when they hatch they will be oriented towards the beach uh, towards the uh, sea and they will start going towards the sea even if you are if you pick up and change its direction it will again move its direction towards the sea so this is the fun of the 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 uh, the science or the earth or the god or the nature which has created these uh, these uh, particular species in a very uh, very call very uh, interesting character which nobody could now no researchers could find out why these things happen even on its way when it get matures and it, it is on to the sea it again comes back to the uh, same uh, place of its birth where it has laid its egg in its course of its life cycle so this is a very interesting strat uh, of this thing and so after uh, reading so much on the uh, turtles and their characters we had an interesting uh, look that why shouldn't we look into some research aspects why things we can we can understand the biology and the physiology and the uh, what were the characteristics of these particular turtles which come to the shores only in a restricted people period and other time they are all around in the deep sea now to understand that we chalked out our program to understand the decadal change in the vegetation pattern in the bitarkanika wildlife sanctuary just below which is the gahirmata marine sanctuary where the turtle nesting takes place using the ndvis then we went for the shoreline analysis of the using remote sensing and gis and th then we took the help of the uh, indian meteorological department as well as uh, the uh, forest department who gave up some data on the climatic variability analysis and also we tried to establish a relationship between the nesting of the turtles with the climatic variability so these are some of the research aspects which which my students did during their course of their dissertations in uh, in pg and mphil now if you see the study area you can see the map of india where this is the odisha from here we have two nesting sites i have told you gahirmata marine sanctuary which is located in the kendrapara district of the of the of the of the state of odisha and then we have uh, the uh, uh, the rushikula rukari which is located in the just below we have in the uh, ganjam district of the odisha so these two particular points here which have marked in red the, in the coastal stretch these are the two major nesting sites of the 
state where the temperature is almost 30 degrees centigrade almost all around the year as you know it's a coastal area and we are a tropical country so the temperature is very much feasible for the uh, laying of the eggs particularly for the uh, turtles so what we did is we used the landsat 78 uh, images uh, for undertaking the survey ground survey for the uh, for vegetation analysis and the ground truth verification was done by taking sampling quadrants temperature rainfall cyclone wind speed data was uh, studied for 16 years turtle nesting data we got for 16 years from the forest uh, department of the wildlife division in bhubaneswar and then we did some statistical analysis to understand the relationship now if you this is just a schematic diagram showing how we have gone for the study that is uh, not uh, not treated now what we got uh, we prepared a luc map from the from this and if you, we have seen that over the years over the over last 10 years what is happening is we are having increasing in the croplands the cropland areas are increasing and the forest area is decreasing to some extent why because of the aquaculture that is being taken up in these particular areas so this is an alarming situation because the if the mangrove areas get reduced then it will not be feasible for these turtles to come over here so this is one thing then we have uh, plotted this and if you if, if you see that uh, these are the the red dots which i have marked over here these are the small changes where the built up lands are coming up some aquaculture activities are coming up and uh, the forest area which was there is reducing then vegetation analysis was also done using the uh, uh, using our, the gis mapping and then we have seen if you see you you see here the uh, in 2007 and in 2017 uh, we have seen that almost there is uh, during the last 10 years about about, about 0.06% of forest area has increased maybe because of the conservation measures or decrease in the fuel cutting and all those things so we there is a, some afforestation programs by the forest department so this has increased the area which is a good sign now we tried to analyze the percentage area of the uh, occupied by the um, uh, different type of uh, uh, land use classes and if you see you can see here that the crop lands have are more in comparison to the dense forest similarly if you if you see on the upper side now we plotted the what is the decrease and increase in the areas where you can see that rabi cropping has decreased a lot and aquaculture has increased in comparison to that so the even we you can see a sandy area the sandy area which i have shown here that is also decreasing and you know this is a negative symbol because if the sandy areas get reduced then the turtles will have a problem in the nesting so this is an ndvi map where we have uh, tried to show the uh, the uh, the vegetation mapping of the particular uh, state and here if you see that overall from 2007 uh, to 2000 in uh, to 2017 the dense uh, patches of course uh, to some extent if you see the dense patches have reduced but you know uh, we can say that this is actually because of the uh, the scrublands or the some rare uh, species are coming up maybe because of the change in the salinity or uh, the change in the uh, the soil quality so the health uh, actually the health wise the ndpi map is showing health wise it has reduced i told you not the density wise it has increased but health wise it has reduced so this is an alarming signal again now this was what we did for the bitter kanika uh, mangroves why because gahir mata beach is almost just the southern part of the bitter kanika wildlife sanctuary now apart from now the if you come to the rushikulla the southern side which i showed in the my previous map the rushikulla side is more of a sandy area we don't have any vegetation only because uh, the few scrub lands we have and there what we uh, we tried to understand now what is the shoreline change in the total state now if you see now we we categorize the shoreline using the dsas model and then we have tried to find we have taken some ground control points and we have been 
we have divided the total zone into southern zone central zone and the northern zone so this is the southern zone this is the central zone this is the northern zone and we have taken out this ground control points for that and if you see the graph here there is a drastic change from southern area to the northern part now this is an individual graph which i have shown where you can understand the change particularly with respect to northern central and southern where you see that northern there is not much change over the uh, ground control points you see the the northern zone uh, central zone has to some extent some erosion accretion is going on but you if you see the southern zone it is really an alarming situation where uh, almost uh, uh, 211 meters uh, recession of the land has taken place towards the landward side so this is and that is the area where we have the gahir mata beach now this is an azimuthal three dimensional graph showing you can you can see from northern to southern zone you can see the northern area is much in a much better position than in the southern part where your the the, the graph is showing a thinning of the shoreline now coming to the now after we studied this we tried to find out whether there is some uh, problems that is occurring with respect to nesting and also with respect to the uh, the climatic variables now for that what we did is we collected our data of 16 years and you can see over the years the turtle nesting has increased e uh, particularly in 2000 from 15 to 18 this particular area you can see that overall it has increased both for rushikulla gahir mata as well as the uh, uh, the total count of the turtles now this is a good uh, symbol symbol because we are thinking that maybe although we are losing the density of, i mean uh, we increase of the density the the uh, the quality of the mangroves might have reduced but the habitat is as such not so much destroyed uh, which is still facilitating the roosting of the turtles so with the uh, what we did is we did some climatic variable study in the rushikulla beach as well as the gahir mata beach and you can see that we plotted uh, graphs for the uh, for the temperature speed then uh, you can see here the temperature is almost uniform as it, i have told you it's a tropical country and we have almost the similar type of a temperature we have uh, then you have you can see here this is the rainfall pattern which has increased from 15 to 19 onwards and you know that the two that that two cyclones which had hit the hit in orissa one was okhi and the other one was fani and because of that uh, there is an increased rainfall and increased wind speed pattern but and in rushikulla again we tried now we plotted uh, to we to see actually whether the nesting is really affected by the by the temperature or the wind for wind speed or the uh, um, uh, rainfall patterns and if you see here the temperature pattern it has it the roosting has increased because i have told you temperature is a very important factor for turtle breeding even so the temperature is very feasible so it has not posed any negative effect the similar the rainfall was not it has not posed much change of course the wind speed also did not pose much change of course the increase with the increasing turtle nesting the similar things we we tried to find out for gahir mata beach even so how we are going to we did the same thing and we found almost a similar result with gahir mata beach even where you can see the turtle nesting has increased over the over the time from 15 to 19 onwards similarly again to satisfy our uh, uh, well ground truth that we got with that we got from the field we tried to again plot data and then we have found here also of course here we have little bit of uh, i mean rainfall has uh, uh, shown a little bit of decreasing trend if you, you can say that uh, some of the beach because too much of rainfall if it occurs sometimes what happens the beach gets eroded i mean lot of uh, sediments and uh, this thing gets caught and yeah, and presently gahir mata beach is uh, really a concern for us because uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, erosion problem which is taking place in the gahir mata region as i have shown you in my previous graph where you can see that the it is the landward intrusion has uh, of the coast has taken place lot of the lot of the uh, coastal area has gone under this sea 
so that is a real uh, thing for our concern now this is what a what i was telling because you no know, odisha is very famous for cyclones maximum of the cyclones are are getting hitted in odisha and you can see here that if you see the odisha uh, uh, cyclonic pattern you see the uh, previously i mean in the it was uh, particularly in the month of june but now slowly it is in the month of october also it is increasing and it, this is a really alarming signal because to uh, the major nesting of the turtles takes place in the november december time and we are now bothered that whether if this shifting of the cyclones take place whether we will be able to find turtles in our coast for in the next 20 years or not but we have not done any prediction model right now for that and if you see i have classified cyclones into four parts where you can see the the super cyclones which used to uh, we uh, used to uh, occur in odisha you can see here that it was in 99 2000 i mean this time amphan also had taken place so we are getting a, a, a box model that we plotted is for, for super cyclones in 99 and uh, both in this to 2020 then the very severe cyclones have also occurred but you see the cyclonic storms are almost have taken a major share so if you see that odisha is basically prone to cyclones and this is the data of only the 19th century of course what we could collect from uh, from the uh, meteorological departments so actually what we concluded from our study was the open and the scrub forests have increased but uh, the density of the forests of course uh, is there because of the afforestation programs the overall recession of the shoreline from 2007-17 has been found to be almost 146 this is an average taking all the three zones that the recession has occurred of 146 meters it is a it is a real threat of the uh, human kind because i mean if our we lose our ecosystem balance then it as i have already discussed we have a significance of turtles also in the marine life so increasing use of land in aquaculture will also give a negative feedback for the coastlines of the of the state apart from that the clan, of course we have found the climatic variables have not posed any significant effect on the nesting of the turtles maybe because of that turtles have been living for more than 100 years and their as per their life span and uh, i think uh, only i mean it is not very much uh, affected with the temperature or i mean uh, with the variations in the climatic pattern right now what we are facing that that is what our study has revealed and last over the 5 years we think conservation aspects of the forests departments have also increased now after all the researches and everything what are the threats if we are going to conserve a species the first and the foremost thing we know is what are the threats operating in the sea turtles the first, as we all know that these are all schedule one species under the indian wildlife protection act the major loss is number one i have told you the habitat loss and degradation the jetties are being built the sea walls are being built maybe because of that apart from that the natural phenomenon not the coastline erosion that i have already discussed is also leading to its habitat loss this is number one threat second is there are a lot of hunting and poaching illegal trades are going on and of course sites has uh, taken a lead role in uh, where wwf india has already a program in odisha uh, conservation aspect of the turtles then we have the incidental captures now incidental captures are actually uh, you can say incidental because the mechanized boats the trawl nets the gill nets which are commercially used by fishermen for catching the fishes in the offshore areas sometimes the turtles most of the times injuries and deaths are the major causes because they are often caught in the net almost it is not intentionally i should not say it is intentionally but unintentionally also it is sometimes caught in the net and accidental deaths are occurring <clears throat> then we have the pollution problems we all know that the marine debris is increasing a lot of plastics are being used and recent studies in the last uh, 10 years back we have already seen there was a yahoo news that turtles have engulfed plastic and because of that they have faced a lot of problem water quality degradation is there because of the huge of course now after uh, covid 
the water quality has improved a lot i think it's a boon in disguise uh, we can say for the uh, ecosystem as a as a whole natural predators and diseases are always there tiger sharks and killer whales sometimes pose threat to them then there is a disease epithelial tumors which occur sometimes in the uh, in, in case of uh, uh, what you call the turtles that is fi fibropapillomatosis which some it is a tumorous type of disease sometimes which occurs in their epithelial uh, uh, cells and apart from that of course in climate change we should not say because see whatever data we we studied there was not much change in the climatic variables uh, or the nesting on the nesting but of course if the sea level rises and it erodes or destroys the beach i mean in indirectly there is a threat from the climate warming of the oceans may sometimes pose uh, some uh, some type of disease may crop up in the near future these studies are not yet done to that extent for the turtles then coming to its protective measures that we should be taking up the first and the foremost thing is uh, that we have to do is we have to use tets that is the turtle excluding devices in the nets that are being used it is already in, in, uh, what you call uh, in in use by the government of india in all the coastal states but of course there are some areas where they don't use it so there is another problem limitations of nets are also is a problem because if they use ted there may be uh, areas that bigger fishes may be may escape so sometimes fishermen don't like that to uh, lose those fishes of the catch so this sometimes poses an indirect threat then there should be some closed seasons for the fishings the trawlers and mechanized boats should have uh, greater than 25 horsepower should be banned during the pre period when they are coming for their nestings so these are the some of the areas some of the limitations and of course uh, the current regulations which are going on the mechanized trawl uh, boats which are in of course which have uh, reduced in particularly andhra tamil nadu and odisha we uh, they have taken a lead role in this Uh, almost 5 to 10 kilometers from their st state of coastline they have made maintained a limitation and this type of enforcement of rules i think will help us in conserving the turtles now what is the way forward we have our new generations with us today that you are supposed to work on lot uh, you can have a lot the working because what to identify what is the reasons for the declining population of turtles in the uh, to maintain the health of the marine ecosystem number one the second is there should be some integrated conservation measures that should be rebuilt in the particularly in the coastal populations they should be given some incentives for their conservation or you can make some groups where the in the, particularly in the areas of turtle nesting then proper law enforcement of course it is there but still some marine police indian coast guards they play a major role fisheries department has to be a very uh, suspective look at the use of the uh, nets that they are using the trawl nets and uh, of course the sea turtles which are where they forage or they where they congregate those areas have to be maintained well maintained by the forest departments of course it is maintained and in nature of course now you cannot uh, think that we are going to uh, what do you call we we are going to add the coastline that we cannot do because already odisha uh, integrated coastal zone management reports have already stated that odisha is losing a lot of coastline uh, coastal beach that is an alarming signal but it's a nature so receding of the mangroves are taking place so automatically with the receding mangroves the beaches are moving more towards the landward side so uh, this is what i a little bit of work that my scholars and this i did and uh, i hope that the study might have been interesting for the uh, the the students the scholars who are listening to the uh, lecture today and maybe they it, it they with i may have given you some way outs or some lines where you can go for more researches in this particular line of uh, conserving the marine turtles i am grateful to dr ambedkar government college for giving me this opportunity i am also thankful to director of forest government of odisha as, as well as the indian meteorological department for providing a lot of data on which we have worked out and uh, with this uh, i would like to thank all of you particularly dr thiru for inviting me and sharing my knowledge because i was uh, totally unknown for this and uh, 
whatever little work i have done with my scholars i could share in this platform any questions which you would like to ask me you are most welcome thank you thank you ma'am for sharing the wonderful research findings on sea turtles in odisha uh, we have a few questions here by our participants yes uh, why all of you choose this particular land in odisha for nesting this is uh, this is what i told you they actually follow the uh, in their life cycle that i discussed wherever they give birth they come to that particular place again and again for nesting that is the major they do come to west bengal also we have bhagapur bhagwatpur wildlife i mean sanctuary in in sundarbans you might have heard of there also we have turtles but the the nesting beach is not so much Uh, uh in in comparison to uh, the orissa co orissa coast we have a lot amount of area which is where they have the uh, the probability of uh, nesting i mean that is a, and it is being said that they follow the magnetic uh, meridian because of which they come to the same place again and again so that is a, you can say i mean no research has come out with it's the only finding is they they use the earth's magnetic field for coming to the same place so it's somewhat like migratory birds who follow the same route and the same uh, nesting place again and again so maybe because of that reason it is coming to odisha maybe it is feasible for breeding feeding foraging as well as for nesting and uh, giving birth maybe a safer place uh, the next question is what are the permissions that are needed to be collected to do research on sea turtles Uh, actually see sea turtles are coming particularly in those uh, uh, those typical periods as i have already discussed during this november december january in the orissa and west bengal coast this uh, upper part of the bay of bengal and in your tamil nadu we it is it is particularly in the month of uh, april or so maybe because of the temperature or whatever it is for carrying out researches you have to first of all take the permission from forest department then you have to take the permission from ministry of uh, forest uh, and climate change that we have to take and apart from that some permissions from fisheries department too because fisheries department play a major role in using tets and other things so that is a, a very important point has the condition of sea turtles improved during this pandemic during this pandemic we have not uh, because pandemic occurred in the time when the roosting was already over so it was here we have whatever data we could find we have seen that over 15 15 to 19 on I mean last 5 years there is a good nesting that has been taking place but uh, the thing that we are finding is now a pandemic situation will will be able to understand in the next uh, roosting which will be coming up by next this this years november december and january because pandemic has occurred after the nesting now in uh, tamil nadu coast i think uh, some changes if the people are working there they can find out some changes but as such in orissa oh, roosting is already over so data was already gathered so next years uh, if if the students can work they can surely find the uh, difference i think because the water quality has changed a lot in every part of the world and these uh, turtles are basically coming from pacific ocean atlantic ocean to the indian coast so they are deep uh, swimmers so obviously we think that uh, the number of turtle roosting should be increased that is our expectation why do sea turtles lay soft soft shell the eggs they are not soft shell eggs uh, maybe because of that because they lay eggs they make big holes uh, in inside the uh, the sandy areas and then they cover it with the with the sand and stay on that over it maybe the hatching process is uh, and it's always legs la eggs in the north south direction because it is being said that if you that we had done once in sundarbans we rotated the direction of the egg and if you rotate the direction of the egg the egg will not hatch the maybe this magnetic meridian plays a major role in the particularly breeding of the turtles but uh, soft shell maybe because of uh, so that the hatching is easier maybe the nature has made like that so that the hatching is faster or oh, the next question is so this is something related to the behavior why they show inter nesting movements during breeding season 
internesting movements uh, i mean uh, what what do you, what does that mean internesting means within that particular area now for example in gahirmata beach it's a wi wider area where they will be moving but they won't go outside the particular that area that is their inbuilt character so movement is somewhat i mean any living being will move it will not stay in one particular place so that is i mean i mean it's a natural phenomenon that is not a i mean that no research has been done on its behavior or uh, study behavioral study because during the nesting what happens is the forest department totally makes a um, total co close boundaries that no people can enter excepting the forest department people or the forest protection committees who are working for the conservation of the turtles so obviously they will move they will obviously they will, wherever they will not find proper place of uh, of laying eggs they will automatically they will show movement that is the usual character of any mother they always like their child to be born in a place where it should be in a safer mode or the hatching is easier free from any interference which cells or organs have the magnetic properties in turtle uh that study i have not done i don't have any idea i cannot answer maybe the turtle uh, specialists can answer because i have not worked with their biology or physiology this is a uh, the what whatever i discussed was the part that i have done the research other magnetic meridian why they follow is not at all uh, studied by by me or I, i mean i have not read any papers on that so this answer i cannot say this we needs a lot of research in future because how the magnetic meridian is working and why they are coming this totally is based on that even from hatching to their uh, going to the sea and again coming back so this this answer i don't have any direct answer to it what is the importance of temperature for determining the sex of unborn turtles in next stage yeah this is a very important question what happens is now that if there there is no proper temperature the eggs will not hatch or sometimes if the eggs hatch the male female ratio differs now if uh, there is a, a higher temperature the it it gives rise to may, more amount of males it's in a lesser temperature it goes to females now why it happens just like i mean uh, maybe Uh, somewhat like oysters oysters even show their early stage they are somewhat like uh, they are most of them are females later on they change to males so i mean uh, no i have not done any research on that so uh, it's not uh, answerable by me i cannot answer why it is so it happens it is it governs because the number of uh, male females that is being counted by the forest department because this counting is not done by uh, normal researchers the forest department allots its own people and along with that sometime when the census takes place they allow some researchers to go on those who are interested for turtle uh, census and all those things they can go and find out and can work on this actually without any data i cannot say all this i mean i should have a scientific basis for telling any type of uh, data which i disclose or uh, do the sound both ships and other shipping vessel affect the life of turtles or do the turtles get stressed by them yeah now it is being said because they are mammals they have some sort of uh, perception to sounds because it is being said that if there is a pleasant sound they don't uh, have any problem but i have read some papers where they have quoted that the sounds of the trawlers i mean it gives a vibration in the water column because of that they can understand that some uh, what you call some uh, negative approach is going to come very soon so they try to deviate from that particular place so of course now why why such happens is because when the nets are being thrown the nets are always being thrown by the trawlers so that is a what you call instinct we can say it's an instinct in the vertebrates that we have the same thing happens with the turtles also they can understand that some negative uh, um, uh, situation is there in front so they we should be little bit away so it gives to their um, uh, changes in the migratory routes it is it does not harm directly of course the the oil and grease that are all these things whatever will be coming out from the trawlers will be affecting the water quality so 
if it is not too because you can see the ocean is such large so small changes in the pollution or this thing the behavior remains the same is the more mortality rate greater in female turtles due to anthropogenic cause it is not for females or males uh, what happens is after nesting after nesting what happens i mean after they give birth to the after the lay eggs this is a human i mean what you call we need awareness programs for that the turtle eggs are very tasty it seems but it is being said by the coastal population so they often use it for their eating that is a negative threat uh, that is occurring even some turtles they kill and most of the turtles are what what the, the the even now in orissa we find lot of lot many turtles if you go in the month of march or april you will find lot of shells which are being scattered in the beaches but this occurs basically we have whatever survey based research we have done the survey says that um, it is already caught in the net and then we what they do is you know they, they when they get entangled they are unable to come out from the net and they die as such in the within the net itself so major death occurs by that poaching of course has reduced a lot by the forest department and other things previously poaching was a big threat but now poaching has reduced a lot what is the biological role of turtles what is a biological role of turtles uh, i have already discussed in the significance of sea turtles that uh, uh, that they are uh, they help in maintaining the jellyfish population they maintain the grasslands they create crevices in the uh, coral reefs for other marine life so all these things are all, already it is a very helpful animal and moreover they are harmless these are the only reptiles which are harmless they do they don't harm you until unless you go and cut them or you beat them or something even if you are cutting them also they will not do, do anything or they can either squeeze within the shell or they will be trying to escape but you know the turtles are very slow movers so if somebody kills or harms it cannot uh, reply back that is the major issue so we human beings have to be more careful for conserving of the turtles just like i can say you what uh, it's the similar type of a character like horseshoe crabs you know in marine in marine ecosystem the most important living fossil records are the horseshoe crabs the horseshoe crabs the carcinoscorpius rotundicorta and tachypleus gigas we have two species which come exclusively in orissa and bengal coast they don't come to any other coast in india only in these two east coast and they they are also done in the similar case no study is being the done it is being said that the tail is uh, used for arthritis is curing arthritis it's all fake belief and they are killing those living fossils but that is again a, has a lot of medicinal value so likewise turtles are the vertebrates who need to be properly managed in our ecosystem because they also play a certain role in maintaining the ecosystem so as i have already discussed the similar the five six points that i have already discussed so we need to conserve turtles of course because this these areas of research are very less because you need to go to the field particularly in that time you have to go for census and you have to go rigorous work for that of course for the other things that as uh, we are working with the secondary data and finding out all those things uh, those things we can always be done St uh, studying the water quality finding out its relationship with the turtle of the uh, nesting of the turtles looking at the soil quality these are the new areas of research that the students can take up can turtles their egg laying process turtles pause or stop their egg laying process no why how how it is possible just like human beings we how can you stop the egg laying it's a natural process you cannot stop that mating will be occurring no male female will be mating and that is required for maintaining the balance they don't use contraceptives no that we you have to control there is no no need of controlling because we need more amount of uh, these animals in our nature so that is uh, not at all possible how can we differentiate a normal and a infected turtle uh that uh, you if you find any tumorous uh, outgrowth in its uh, in its flippers particularly if it it is being seen because other part it remains within the carapace so you cannot see it the body of it uh, if you can if you see some uh, infections those who are working with diseases 
they can find out if some tumorous diseases are cropped up just like just like normal vertebrates we even have some, uh, some if, if there is a, some tumor here you can see if there is inside tumorous tumors you cannot see because we are not going to operate them and see and find out whether they are diseased or not whatever morphological uh, difference we will be finding we can work out on that what are the specific diseases which affect turtle life we have only uh, i have only mentioned you one uh, disease which i have discussed with you that is a tumorous disease but other diseases uh, i mean i have not uh, I, i mean i did not find any other disease that is being uh, harming the animal this is a turtle fibropapillomatosis which is a epithelial tumor other other diseases are not recorded this is the only disease which is recorded Okay, I think, uh, ma'am, you have given a clear explanation for all the questions raised by our participants. I think they would have got cleared with their doubts now. Thank you so much for uh, giving a very clear explanation. Now it's thank over you. to Dr. Tirunavu Karasu. Thank you, thank you so much. I hope I, I mean, I, the questions say that students were, I mean, keen to listen to the lecture. It seems so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, very good afternoon, ma'am, uh, and participants. Very good afternoon. Uh, it's a one. so wonderful and uh, very informative lecture uh, regarding the turtle nesting and in connection with the remote sensing and factors affecting like uh, uh, temperature rainfall and wind uh, speed and all uh, so you have mentioned the super cyclone effect on uh, turtle uh, distribution and uh, other threats and especially uh, finally we had a very good discussion and i hope all the participants more than uh, 300 they have uh, listening properly since you are a teacher uh, background so you have explained very clearly especially more than 20 minutes we have discussion is one of the encouraging thing uh, by the participants uh, thank you very much ma'am uh, having spent to your valuable time for our uh, national capacity building training on marine biodiversity and its conservation uh, thank you very much uh, thank you once again thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you ma'am participants before we move on to the third session of the second day program the daily link the zoom link and the youtube link will be posted in the whatsapp group and in the telegram group the zoom link and the youtube link will be posted in the whatsapp group and the telegram group so participants please make note of it we will not be sending any separate mails from the fascinating world of marine ornamental fishes and marine reptiles we now move on to the marine mammals in india dugongs are found in the gulf of manar gulf of kutch park bay andaman and nicobar islands once found in abundance in indian waters the dugong population has reduced drastically now dugong is currently the only herbivorous marine mammal on earth which feeds exclusively on sea grass they are known as the farmers of sea grass they are involved in regenerating a healthier sea grass ecosystem that act as a carbon source these dugongs are now facing a major threat now, what are the threats faced by these dugong and what are the challenges in the conservation of this dugong is now going to be presented by dr k madhu mahesh research fellow dugong recovery project wildlife institute of india dehradun i now request Dr M Shashikala to introduce our resource person Dr Madhu Mahesh Good morning to one and all present here it my privilege to welcome and introduce Dr Madhu Mahesh project fellow wildlife institute of india dehradun uttarakhand and we are from zoology department welcome sir sir completed his master and phd degree in, in madras christian college chennai he pursued his phd degree in the title of coastal resource exploitation and its impact on ecosystem a specialized special reference to mulaskan shell mining in pulkit lake he published six research papers in reputed national and international journals and presented six research papers in a conference and symposium he attended 16 con 16 conference and two workshops a eminent fellow 
uh, from 2009 to 2016, 11 years, work, worked a project to entitle an evaluation of comparative study of biodiversity and conservation of the three art spots in Asia, sponsored by United Board of Christian Higher Education in Asia. From 2016 to till date, is looking his views on a project entitled a recovery of Juhang and their habitat in India and integrated participating approaches in Wildlife Institute of India, Dagradin, Uttarakhand. Sir so organized 10 Juhang rescue programs in Balk Bay and Gulf of Menar and conducting 1,000 awareness events in fisherman community. Dr. Madhu Magesh has an excellent licensed Cuba diving, open water, advanced open water diving personality, especially obtained in Underwater photography, deep diving, quick performance, buoyancy, and navigation. Warm greetings, sir. Now I call upon Dr. Madhu Magesh to deliver his valuable presentation. Welcome, sir. Thank you. I thank Dr. Shashikla ma'am for a nice introduction of Dr. Madhu Magesh. Now, let's move into this session. Hello, it's audible? Yes, it's audible, sir. Yeah, thank you, Shashikla madam. Can you open this screen? I request the participants to post the questions in the chat box. Both the participants of Zoom and YouTube, you can post your questions in the chat box. Your screen is visible, sir. Yes, sir. Nearindi Amayadu Ulaganil, Yariarakum, Manindi Amayadu Ulake, which means no life without water and no discipline without rain. For the any conservation project, without community, we can't succeed. My project also, the part of conservation. My project topic is recovery of Dugong and their habitat in India and integrated participatory approach. This is my uh, team, my principal inv investigator is Dr. K. Shivakuma and co investigator is Johnson. We are working in Gujarat, Andaman, Nicobar, and Tamil Nadu. This is my Tamil Nadu team working in Gulf Amana and Pop Bay. Hello? Sir, you're audible. You can continue, sir. Yeah. Slide is not changing, sir. Hello? Yeah, yes, sir. Slide is not changing. You just go on to the uh, next slide, sir. One second. The slide is not changing, sir. Ah, yeah, okay. Ready. Okay, visible? Hello? Yes, sir, it's visible. Ah, okay. I start with the types of uh, sea cow. Uh, we have five types of sea cows. There are manatees, three types of manatees, and dugong and stellar. Stellar was identification, identified in 17th century by scientist Stellar. Uh, 
uh, however it becomes extinct due to poaching within 30 years of identification therefore now we have only four types of uh, sea cows uh, three types of uh, three different types of manatee and one dugong dugong is a uh, huge uh, herbivorous mammals it's very calm animal it lives in uh, very shallow water and uh, it will grow up to 3 uh, meter and uh, it will weigh 500 kg the external features of dugong dugong is uh, look like uh, a elephant but uh, no evidence for uh, related with the elephants this uh, mouth structure was uh, uh, they easily uh, feeding with uh, seagrass and it has second photo it has uh, the nostril nostril for using for breathing because uh, dugong is mammals they every 6 minute it will come out and take breath and uh, uh, they have a male and female have the mammary gland but uh, the female it has the big mammary gland because of uh, feeding of uh, babies and dugong also have the tusk uh, tusk was uh, tusk was helpful for uh, uh, fighting with uh, other uh, uh, male dugongs Uh, male dugongs for uh, the breeding season the each male fighting uh, fighting with uh, attraction the female that's why the tusk it will help and also fluke uh, fluke was the uh, dugong it will help for dugong movement and also the flipper flipper was uh, when they going for feeding that time it will help for walking and also the steering this is skeleton structure the fluke was help for the movement of the dugong see the flukes the dugong it will help for the movement and the flippers also used for the walking and turning it is like steering and the, compared to dugong and manatee manatee it has the a different type of look like uh, pedal structure and the uh, uh, mouth also is a uh, little different a dugong like fluk like a tail and dugong external feature the male and female easily identify identify the any people like stakeholders also the it has mammary gland in the male or female has mammary glands but uh, male is small and female it has big mammary glands and cumbrical skull and genital slit and anus the male it has each uh, different uh, um, uh, difference uh, uh, each is different uh, the umbilical scar and the genital slit and anus the same size and but compared to female it the uh, anus and genital slit is very near and umbilical scar is a little far and also the the size of the dugong also a little similar with our human it will grow up to already i said it will grow up to uh, 10 meter the 6 to 9 feet and but steller is very big animal because it will grow up to 30 to feet and uh, free swimming animal and over the 40 country support to protect the dugong uh, which five sub regions the south asia it will has uh, five uh, sub regions to conserve the dugongs the north western indians and south western indians and south east indian pacific the other countries are uh, each sub regions we have five countries or uh, five to 10 countries are uh, protect the animal but in asia south asia only india and pakistan uh, bangladesh and sri lanka only it has dugong but compared to Uh, other uh, compared to other countries only india and sri lanka only is a concern with the dugong the dugong is the uh, vulnerable is used in list in critical endangered in india in india is scheduled one wildlife protection act the life history is dugong lives in up to 72 to 73 years and also reproduction uh, the adult it will come 8 to 18 years the calvic interval calvic interval mean each dugong uh, the one baby to another baby it will take 2.5 to uh, 6 years okay the mating bigger already i said lacking method the use for lacking method the elephant also using for lacking method only so lacking method the each female uh, the males are fighting uh, with attraction the uh, female and birth is already i said uh, 2.5 to 6 years Uh, it will take the period because of uh, the mother uh, 
feeding calf with one uh, one and a half years to uh, two years. Okay, parental care. The mother parental care, our like human, it will care about uh, uh, two years. Uh, the giving feeding also uh, two years for uh, two years for uh, feeding the young ones. The ecology. Duong is only serving species in uh, Duong in their family and the exclusively herbivorous marine mammal and biodiversity value also very high and flagship species uh, the Gulf of Manar also the Duong is a flagship species and umbrella uh, species in coastal habitat it's Duong lives in the particular area the seagrass diversity also is excellent and also other um, associated animals seagrass associated animals also live uh, and breeding feeding also is very easy that's why the Duong is called umbrella uh, species and the feeding method that uh, Dugong is preferred diet the high nitrogen and low fiber and low soil. The Dugong likes the Dugong some, uh, in, uh, around the world. Uh, 60 out of 14 species, only four species, uh, Cyanodosia and Syringodium. This species uh, Dugong like very much. And physiological modification, see, the dugong eating this method only, the, the jaws and, and the teeth and everything like uh, a physiological modify for uh, the uh, grass, the uh, seagrass. And the, uh, the uh, flipper also used for walking, how it will walk and uh, eat the food. This is the uh, sound of a dugong. Because the dugong is aquatic animal, that's why this is sound. This type of sound is like a dog sound it will give for communication. And also seagrass is marine flowering plant. Seagrass and uh, algae is different. Seagrass is marine flowering plant. It has root and the rhizomes and everything. Rhizome for anchorage the bottom. Around the world, 60, 60 species of seagrass in 12 genera. And in India, 50, uh, 50 species of seagrass are present. In Gulf of Manar and Park Bay, out of 50, 14 species are present. In Andaman, 11 species. The more associated fauna and flora lives in this uh, seagrass ecosystem. The Tamil, this is the vermiculture name and uh, vernacular name. In Tamil, is the Simon species is called Kadal um, Kore and Kadal Thai. And the Enalus species is Kadal Wari. And Alodil species is Kadal Kore. And Alaphila is called Kadal Pasi and Syringodium is Usikore. This is the Dugong grass, the Alaphila. Dugong likes uh, more in Alaphila and also Syringodium, Cymodosia and Alaphila. This, uh, this species, uh, seagrass species is uh, Dugong grasses. This is global distribution. The global seagrass diversity and distribution. Uh, the green shade is indicates number of uh, species. The high value of uh, seagrass is present in uh, the Asian countries. And also the blue dotted and polygon indicate documentary put the seagrass occurrence in other area. That's why in the, see the Gulf of Manar and Park Bay near the Sri Lanka, the more seagrass are present. That's why the more Dugong will uh, present that the particular area. Seagrass is the, uh, a very good uh, ecosystem because stabilization of sediment and uh, also prevents the erosion and uh, filter the water, the, the more nutrition water, the pollution water also enter in the uh, sea. The all pollution, nutrition water, the seagrass uh, beds for uh, uh, filtering and also uh, nursery beds for the more animal like fishes, uh, crabs, shrimps and uh, also oysters. Um, uh, molluscans. This is a very good nursery bed and feeding ground. The seagrass important they are associated with fishes. The seagrass is extract nutrients for the uh, seabed and channel into the water. It's like a filter and uh, reduce turbidity because the the Park Bay and Gulf of Manar area also the more uh, aquaculture farm is there and more pollution water mixed with the uh, uh, sea. That time the uh, seagrass is filtering seagrass, but they're filtering the water and pure water in the end of the uh, ocean. The unique epiphyte and epifauna and uh, food 
habitat for other animal is a great habitat because the more already i said the more fishes and uh, crab crustaceans and molluscans and uh, everything lives in the seagrass bed and uh, used for feeding and uh, uh, breeding ground the seagrass bed uh, supports support as many as 400 fishes and 5 million other organism in the particular area the the uh, clown fish and uh, cucumber sea urchins and molluscans and the star fish sea urchin and um, all animals live in the seagrass bed this seagrass ecosystem the more fishes are living in the seagrass bed okay But the seagrass is more is pollution because the the Gulf of Oman is a protected area. But in the Park Bay area, the more seagrass, uh, the more uh, aquaculture farm, and the uh, more pollution water is mixed with uh, uh, sea water. So more pollution and sedimentation, influence of uh, marikals. I already said the uh, aquaculture farm, more aquaculture farm present in Park Bay area. They are all uh, the dirty water mixed with. Uh, a uh, sea grass bed so that, that is also major effect and also fishing the more fishing pressure is uh, park bay area the trawl fishing they see the trawler is uh, the entire ecosystem they will affect because the trawler they have the rules up to uh, after uh, 2.5 mil, uh, miles only they have to fishing but in the park bay region they will come to near the shore the entire ecosystem they will affect like this see the entire at uh, the bottom all animals not only in the uh, sea grass the bottom animals everything will affect and also some villages are using for dynamic fishing dynamic fishing also not only affected fish and also affect the entire ecosystem and dugong is mostly the um, affected in the entangled and net and the boat uh, eating See some dugongs are because the Pakpen Pakpen Gulf of Manar is very near by the Sri Lanka, only a few miles only. So there is a maximum width is twenty meter only. So in the the this Indian border is very uh, near in eighty kilometer only. So in the particular area only the thousand uh, trawler only for fishing capacity. But in this particular area more than five hundred. Uh, Trawler, uh, they are fishing and also using the illegal nets. That's illegal net. That's why the more dugong are entangled the net and also uh, is eating up the boat. See the dugong will happen. And also habitat destruction and poaching. Poaching also not all villages. The some of villages uh, they are using by uh, hunting the animal and also use some meat or farm. the particular area because they are using meat is good for health and also they making the oil and uh, paste and they are using the oil for good for uh, the uh, knee pain and everything this all is meat no any uh, uh, good reason they are poaching and hunting for eating the animal and this is a poaching that only it will happen 2017 if catching the animal if uh, forest department and marin police they will arrest and uh, maximum because it will come under the wildlife protection act schedule 1 in dubong so that's why the if the catching the animal immediately the forest department the any information get the forest department marin police immediately they will arrest the fisherman and uh, they find 10000 rupees and also they put charge for uh, in jail for uh, Case they put case and the seven point uh, seven years uh, four to seven years uh, they will put the jail. And the, our uh, project, the Duong Recovery Project, the major uh, four uh, teams: the species conservation and habitat conservation, and creating awareness and capacity building. The species conservation, habitat conservation, like ecological monitoring, and uh, the capacity building and the creating awareness the outreach and training the dugong lives in uh, three uh, places in india uh, gujar gulf of kutch and uh, andaman nicobar and gulf of manar and pompey the compared to three side the our gulf of manar tamil nadu only it has more dugong the 77 to 150 dugongs are present and andaman nicobar only 44 to 81 dugongs 
The Gulf of Gach only 10 to 15 dugongs only is present. This is our steady area. We are working in uh, Park Bay and Gulf of Manda. Up to Adram Patanam to Mandamu, then Mandamu to Tutukuri, we are working. And compared to Gulf of Manar, Park Bay is an unprotected area and most lots of dugong are present. And uh, healthy seagrass continuous metabolism is present and anthropogenic disturbance also is very high and poaching also very high in the Gulf of Manar uh, Park Bay area. But Gulf of Manar is a protected area. It uh, has 24 offshore islands also present. And there is, uh, compared to Park Bay, Gulf of Manar is uh, uh, little poaching and uh, disturbance also. The dugong conservation challenges. Uh, the more challenges because the uh, dugong is a slow reproduction, a slow growth animal, and also late maturity. The aquatic communication is aquatic communication and low reproductive rate and narrow diet prefer because out of 14 species, only four species only uh, the dugong will prefer. And also uh, the poaching and the net and uh, anthropogenic threats, the poaching and net entangled and the habitat distraction also very high. The other challenges is no protected area and park already is it and lack of uh, scientific and technology and awareness and difficult to and difficulty, uh, difficult uh, in biodiversity and monetary and difficulty in uh, assessing the population status and also difficult to uh, restoration of preferred dugong for habitat. This is challenges. And also we are using the basic method only. The research and monitoring, we are using the line intercept transect method for uh, uh, transect and uh, watering method for uh, seagrass assessment survey and also we build the giving training for stakeholders and, uh, <clears throat> and also creating awareness and also uh, giving uh, friends of Dugong, we, uh, we made a friends of Dugong network, we created friends of Dugong network and uh, also we are creating Dugong ambassador program, other community environment activity, we are doing also some um, questionnaire survey also we are prepared and awareness and capacity building, we are uh, conducting more marine exhibition and rallies and beach cleanup and community meetings more and more. And also we are giving IFS training and biodiversity monitoring training for stakeholders like forest department, fishery department, and also um, uh, uh, the fishermen and also some NGOs we are giving for training. And also we will give scuba diving and snorkeling training program. And also, um, because if you ask the, anyone, if you ask marine, what is the marine mammals, the easily everyone tell uh, whales and dolphin only. So many people doesn't know that dugong, including fishermen community. In Park Bay and Gulf of Manar also, the, the, the fishermen kids also doesn't know what is a dugong and sea cow. They locally, they will call Aurya. If you ask Aurya also, doesn't know the fishermen children. That's why we reach parents through the children. So we conducting Dugong scholarship exams. The, the, we will give them materials to promote the national education, nature education, and also um, only for uh, Tanjavur, Pudukote, uh, Ramanadaburam, uh, Tutukudi district, uh, coastal government school students only. Uh, the students for ninth and eleventh standard. Why? Because uh, if you get scholarship in ninth standard, uh, each month five hundred. Uh, when they will finish the tenth standard, they will get 12,000 rupees because each month uh, 500 rupees and also Lamanth is also same scenario um, same scenario or if you get Lamanth standard 500 rupees it will come around 24 months they will get 12,000 they will help for higher education last year more than 800 students appear in the exams and 53 students got scholarship and now um, 1,550 students are uh, appear in the exam. Now they will get 153 students getting uh, uh, getting the scholarship program. This student we are calling the uh, Dugong ambassador. Why? Because they are uh, this uh, this student last year got the scholarship program. Tutukudi, uh, Adram Patnam, and Tanjavur Pudupate district student. This uh, students are called Dugong ambassador because. Uh, we were using for the uh, beach cleanup program and other rally event and also um, some of the 
um, some uh, rally and exhibition we are using this uh, student and also we honor them because um, they are uh, who are getting the first uh, 10 places we will give the momentum and also uh, we conducting big meeting and uh, we invite parents also the Tamil Nadu BCCF give honor the students and we will uh, go for uh, each school and give the uh, certificate and also uh, a gift. And 2016, we had a great opportunity to uh, give awareness uh, uh, to people. The, Narendra, the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, they started the Science Express time. The awareness program helped with the Arumugal Trust. Arumugal Trust uh, is the, um, they will make uh, videos and uh, drama like uh, the uh, the awareness of uh, seagrass, dugong, and all they were doing, uh, they, they, were, they are doing uh, the drama on kids and uh, educated to uh, the normal people. And also, uh, that time, uh, 20,000 school children visited, and 40 adults also uh, um, educated the importance of uh, uh, conservation of marine biodiversity, including dugong and the, the climate change science sector. And also, we created a Dugong Volunteer Network. When we started that time, only 100 Dugong Volunteer network, uh, people only registered. And now, more than 1,000 uh, uh, volunteers are uh, registered our uh, register our team. This volunteer network it helps for uh, conducting awareness program and the capacity training program and also cleanup program, underwater cleanup program, this type of awareness event. If we call and uh, inform that volunteer network, immediately they will arrange each village for the, this type of awareness event. And also we are conducting mass board survey at that time we will uh, invite the uh, volunteer, uh, more than 40 boards, we will conduct the board survey, uh, they will come and help us. And also uh, up to uh, 16 to till date, uh, <coughs> 30 Dugong are standing in Palpe and Gulf Manor and also um, 33 live sighting in fishermen and stakeholders and also our team. After we giving the lot of a training program and awareness program and capacity building, in first time in India 2016, the Palpe area, one of villages is uh, Kira, uh, Totem, the people, fishermen people, they uh, one Dugong entangle are net so immediately they release the animal so we invite them and honor we will give the 10,000 uh, check for that fisherman and also uh, 10,000 fishing this is the releasing video and all stakeholders like home car forest department fishery department all involve the rescue in this uh, dugong and after that, also continuously, till date, more than 10 Dugong rescue in Park and Gulf of and 2018 and uh, 2019. Now the fisherman mind it will change because um, they, uh, before entering the WAA, they will, if catch the animal immediately, uh, they will sell. But now, they, now the importance of animal and uh, Dugong and they will release immediately. If we entangle the net immediately, they will release and we will give the honor them for 10,000 cash price and uh, they, this is a Tamil Nadu PCCF uh, honor the uh, fisherman. This is I personally, uh, our team, uh, more than three Dugong we rescued. This is a Dugong entangled in the net. This is released. This is, I think this is the sixth Dugong we are releasing. The flu came for movement. See, the flipper only for steering, for turning the animal. See, the, because this is a marine mammal, so every six minutes it will come up and uh, take breath. See, this is the breath. The dugong is every six minutes it will come up and uh, take breath and uh, dolphin every 20 minutes and uh, whales every 40 minutes it will come up and take breath. 
and also uh, till date we are uh, 10 dugongs we are uh, rescue and release so we are prepared the standard operating procedure to rescue entangle the dugong so we are uh, when they entangle the dugong immediately uh, we cut the mouth area because uh, the easy to breathe and also bring the safest place uh, the low depth place and also um, we are uh, easily smoothly we will release the animal so this is the uh, some procedure we will make and uh, we will give the training to fisher uh, uh, fisherman and uh, other department also they will uh, whenever they entangle the net they immediately they will cut the net and release the animal and capacity building we are giving the ifs training course also and scuba diving snorkeling training for the uh, stakeholders, uh, forest department, marine department, and uh, uh, marine police, and uh, uh, fishery department, and other NGOs also. This is a workshop, the marine mammal standing, and uh, we are conducting marine biodiversity monitoring training also. And also we will teach uh, teachers, we will explain about doing a teacher, because teachers are working all over the uh district and they explain these kids also the habitat specific monitoring also we will teach them we are giving the scuba diving uh, certificate also um until date uh, 20 forest department and five marine police and four uh, fishermen also learned uh, scuba diving and they got certificate whenever we are going for fishing and uh, um, underwater cleanup program they will join with us and they help. Escuba diving, the first training course in the Gulf of area. And also we will provide the certificate and license. This is a mobile app. The forest department along with the wildlife of India, the start of the mobile app. This is just like uh, WhatsApp and Facebook. Just download all fishermen uh, in Tajaur Kudukote, uh, Ramanadabur Kudukote. They will just download the app and register name and mobile number, everything. If whenever they're going for fishing, if if uh, see the animal, uh, not only in Dubang, and the turtle, and whale, and dolphin, and uh, any animal, if you see the animal or entangled animal, immediately they will take pictures or video that pictures and video, when they come to shore, they will uh, hand over the forest department and marine police and our team. They team, they make, they create the database of marine macro fauna, sighting and standing. This is helpful for uh, our department. We are uh, making some outreach material like uh, posters and uh, stickers and uh, awareness uh, banners and everything this is our materials the conclusion uh, till now the community has a positive response because uh, the when we start the uh, this project we are going to speak with the uh, uh, fisherman community they won't uh, interested and uh, they cannot uh, listen our uh, um, program but now is a positive response because the fishermen kids are getting the scholarship program that's why the student uh, the bridge for our department and uh, uh, parents they're very bridge that's why they call the Dugong ambassador they are helpful for all activities uh, like uh, if we are going for a village survey also the uh, Dugong ambassador helpful for uh, uh, helpful a lot Okay, and also nowadays uh, 153 students are getting uh, Dubong scholarship. Each student they are getting 12,000 rupees. And forest department um, and also all rank in Ramanadapuram, Tanjavur, Pudukote in the coastal area and Tutukudi also they have the certified license. And also we will give the uh, research and monitoring uh, biodiversity training also. And uh, we are uh, more uh, utilize the mobile app. Uh, create a base where uh, marine macro fauna sighting and standing. Before I am going to end, this is my dream. So Thiru sir asking me, Madhu, not only is your dream, this is my dream also. They, everyone asking, this is our dream, sir, not only your dream, sir. 
this is not the abroad or foreign this is only for india in uh, andaman nicobar and uh, lakshadweep and our india only but protected area but unprotected area we are maintaining like this beautiful sea see how we are maintaining the human whenever the wherever the humans are going there we are making like this the protected area like this sometimes i will explain the uh, fisherman community uh, we are making like this uh, in our course but they won't accept it then i explain anyone find this place i think the marine series students know very well the honorable uh, prime minister 2017 the narendra modi uh, the open uh, tanuskodi road okay uh, for tourism purpose uh, up to arichal munai they make the road and uh, open for tourism the when the narendra modi ji started this uh, tourism the first day we took this photo within 3 days the place become like this and also i thank uh, our wa director dean and everyone and also tamil nadu forest department fishery department and coastal security group and uh, also omkar foundation our dugong volunteer network and uh, all field site and uh, field staff and also i thank uh, dr ambedkar uh, government arts college for giving me this wonderful opportunity to uh, present our jukong about jukong thank you questions thank you for for that uh, wonderful presentation you have given us all the conservation strategies and what are the various methods to uh, conserve dugongs there are a few questions from our participants the first one is are dugongs seen in the north west and southwest part of india dugong are seen in the northwest and southwest part of india yeah one is uh, in gulf of manar and uh, park bay region and also present in there also okay the next one is are there any marine sanctuaries exclusively for dugongs no sir actually uh, dugong is very sensitive animal and also the last year the thailand also won a baby dugong uh, they got but within a three month uh, it will die and also cmfr also uh, tried uh, the maintain one pond like uh, uh, structure and maintain one dugong but within three month the dugong were died hello the genetic variation of dugongs of the different countries is there any genetic yeah is there we are also we are we, uh, standing and uh, sighting animal we are also take the sample we are also checking uh, the genetic variation and um, the uh, our dugong also is uh, like uh, only present in the gulf of manar and sri lanka coast we are uh, right now we are uh, genetic sample also uh, we are uh, checking this uh, uh indian dugong or uh, the south asian dugong we are now only we are uh, doing the research the genetic research when was the last census of dugong carried out i think 2010 uh, the last dugong uh, census were carried out uh, the ln most i think so uh, since only uh, uh, said the population of the gulf of manar and gulf of kutch and uh, andaman nicobar what is the number of uh, dugongs in the recent census sir the last census when it was taken and what is the number of actually in in in, in park bay and gulf of manar area 72 uh, 77 to 150 dugongs are present and uh, in gujarat only 40 to 70 dugongs and andaman uh, in andaman nicobar 40 to 70 dugongs and gujarat in only uh, 10 to 15 dugongs are present sir Uh, but in gulf of manar only it has gulf of manar park bay only is a huge dugong population in india what are the specific uh, trawl fishing uh, methods for this uh, dugong
what is the method of the fishing method sir i mean what are the ways in which these dugongs are getting affected actually uh, see already i said right so the sri lanka border is very near the uh, thousand uh, trawl uh, boating only uh, capacity for fishing in the particular area but here the maximum 4000 to 5000 uh, boats are there so fishing pressure also very high they are using for uh, ratamani the trawling is uh, two boats uh, they are using for uh, fishing that is very uh, affecting for dugong uh, because uh, they are making noise right dugong is aquatic communication right so they are making very noise and also Uh, propeller also uh, they are affecting by dugong. Sometimes uh, the noise it will create, and uh, dugong was escaping one boat to another uh, area. There also some boats are there. They eating their propeller and uh, boat strike. It will happen the particular area because unprotected area. And also the uh, trawl fishing. Uh, we have rules. Okay, uh, uh, up to three nautical mile only they are allowed to fishing. But in past by region they will enter. Uh, near the shore also up to half kilometer also they will enter and fishing so other also country boat people also they are affecting for trawl fishing not only dugong in the marine and uh, dolphins are also whales uh, are also affecting the particular area now uh, the next one is uh, do you think that tagging the certain dugongs for scientific purpose is essential and for yes sir because uh, we are also planning but uh, this the scientific community is not uh, uh, recommend because of uh, uh, in india very low population only is present and also uh, very sensitive animal if we are tagging within uh, uh, within 3 month or 6 month it will die so uh, any we are planning to make any plastic tag and uh, uh, because the turtle has different type of satellite tag and the whale shark also Uh, they are using the satellite tag because the dugong is a very sensitive animal. We can't be able to using and also population also very less. That's why the uh, scientists and our PA also not recommended. And we are planning for any uh, lapper type uh, tagging and also uh, uh, tape like the tagging. We are uh, discussing. Maybe in the future we will. Uh, does dugong has any medicinal importance? Dugong, sir. Dugong, uh, uh, no. Dugong only is uh, umbrella species. So if it live in seagrass habitat, the other organism, my pia, uh, uh, every time it will say one dugong lives in particular area. The fisherman uh, getting per year one crore uh, valuable of fishing fish fishes they will get because the umbrella species if, if lives in seagrass bed they maintain seagrass. Uh, Uh, habitat dr adavan uh, sir also they explained very well the maintain the seagrass bed and uh, um, the uh, dead uh, uh, materials and also the fishes crustacean and crab and mussels and mollusk and everyone is uh, used for feeding and uh, breeding ground this dugong is uh, the umbrella species in gulf of manar and park bay also is uh, not medical purpose the myth uh, Uh, it will happen in the particular area. They are catching the animal and also use for uh, making dress and uh, uh, this uh, the the dugong oil. It will, they are using for the uh, knee pain and everything. But uh, everything is myth. And also dugong is uh, uh, when we started more dugong for hunting the some other villages. Few villages, not all villages. A uh, few villages. But now uh, the great outcome that who are all hunting the dugong, they are now releasing the animal and it farm. That is the excellent uh, success of our uh, dugong uh, team. And also Steller, right? Seventeen century they identify the Steller. Within thirty years, within thirty years the entire uh, Steller was extinct. Uh, our W team and stakeholders take effort. We hope. definitely uh, the same scenario uh, it will not happen in our dugong so now the people are so mind changes the uh, whenever they entangle the net immediately they will release but value is i for dugong meat per kg is 
thousand rupees. If you catch dugong, uh, it will come on dugong around that uh, three lakhs. <laughs> <laughs> this is the value, but if you catch the animal, uh, immediately forest department will arrest and uh, give ten thousand rupees fine and uh, seven years. Uh, uh, sir, the next question: Do they have any defensive mechanism, self-defense mechanism, for them to protect themselves? Self-defense mechanism. Hello. Do they have Hello. any defense mechanism? Hello. Hello. Your voice is breaking, sir. Uh, do they have any self defense mechanism no sir no they are aggressive in nature sir can you hear me no sir this voice is breaking uh, dr madhu yes yes sir uh, uh, is there any defense mechanism exhibited by uh, animal defense mechanism for safety purpose protection yes sir they actually uh, the animals yeah we are using uh, the uh, we are planning to start the community reserve area in uh, one particular area uh, in uh, northern parkway side so we are protect the animal we are uh, no 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 not not by your side okay by animal itself having any defense defense mechanism this is that is very calm animal sir okay, it's okay, not right. uh, yeah very calm and uh, uh, it's never uh, it's not uh, uh, attack uh, human and uh, other uh, thing and very calm and very shallow animal sir it's not affected oh uh, what is the it's like human what is the particular ecological role of dugong in sea grass ecosystem actually the uh, the sea grass is maintaining the uh, the dugong is maintaining the sea grass level and also uh, it helpful for uh, the associated animals like uh, fishes crabs sins and molluscan they using for uh, feeding and breeding down and also uh, the dugong folks for help uh, for growing the uh, uh, sea grass Another? and also uh, is growing the sea grass and also helpful for uh, the all uh, Seagrass ecosystem. There's one question on the life cycle of dugong, sir. Life cycle. Life cycle. Okay, actually, dugong is uh, his lifespan is seventy three years, uh, up to seventy three years. And uh, if, um, for uh, the adult, uh, the baby is uh, uh, they are having. Uh, one year in parental care and after that they release the dugong and one to uh, two years uh, they giving feeding and after that uh, the uh, eight to uh, eighteen years they will getting adult uh, dugong and also reproducting organs also start from uh, eighteen years only and the female uh, got and male also they have tusk the when the attraction the female the Uh, males was fighting with each other and tusk will help the tusk mark will also identify the dugong and also um, then uh, again reproduction will start and 73 up to 73 years they will live sir there's one question on someone is asking about how to get these posters on dugongs they need your website id website and yeah we have a website in uh, wa website uh if you enter the website uh, you can mail also and also i will share the mail you can just give the mail id i will share the posters and everything and also uh, and um, we are plan- conduct the dugong awareness program and also dugong day also so in in website we, everything we will get the posters and also are you giving any specific training for students sir training program yes sir we will give the uh, not specific uh, training but after msc they will come for internship we will give the uh, biodiversity monitoring training and uh, sea grass survey and uh, uh, how to use the uh, uh, line intercept transect and how to use the quadrant method and the point uh, intercept method also and um, also we are giving the how to create awareness program and how to conduct questionnaire survey itkt dk uh, methods and also um, 
how to create capacity building and maximum uh, the snorkel training we will give and uh, when we join the project then only we will give the scuba diving pro, uh, certificate also we will give the training okay thank you very much sir i think you have cleared all the doubts for our participants thank you sir and thank now you. Thank you. namakar sir Uh, dear participants and dr madhumagesh uh, has given a wonderful uh, presentation with uh, a lot of pictures and videos and he has explained the life history of uh, the animal uh, and the ecosystem of uh, the sea grass how it relates uh, uh, the sea grass ecosystem and uh, uh, the dugong uh, and he emphasized the uh, conservation challenges and dugong uh, rescue uh, activities in this webinar uh, Uh, i sincerely uh, by our uh, explain express my thanks to dr madhumagesh uh, having um, accepting our invitation delivering a lecture in this uh, national university building training program i am very proudly say uh, madhumagesh uh, he was my student in the year uh, 2007 to 2009 at transition uh, college in the department of marine studies and as well as yesterday's speakers dr adavan uh, and dr titus manuel uh, they were also my student at transition uh, college I'm very proud, proudly say uh, in this occasion, uh, best wishes, Dr. Madhu Magesh, uh, for your uh, great future. Thank you, sir. Current, current biodiversity and conservation aspects uh, in near future. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Road you, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to present about Dubang and conservation. And also, I thank. Uh, and dr kumaran sir and also i thank uh, dr saravanan sir uh, for giving me this opportunity thanks a lot sir thank you thanks to all uh now we have come to the end of uh, today's session so i thank dr tt ajit kumar dr kakoli banerji and madhu magesh for having joined us in this virtual platform today and making this training program a great success thank you dear participants from the fascinating world of marine invertebrates and marine vertebrates we move on to the third day tomorrow on the conservation strategies climatic changes policies and issues so tomorrow the session will be shared by dr v balaji park bay conservation and education center rajamadam tanjavur dr m anand assistant professor and head in charge department of marine and coastal studies madurai kamarajar university madurai and dr deepak samuel scientist e national center for sustainable coastal management chennai so tomorrow we'll have these three sessions please do join us tomorrow morning at 9:50 and stay connected have a nice day bye uh, as far as the feedbacks are concerned we have just recorded the attendance for today both in youtube and zoom so will, there will not be any feedback which is posted tomorrow we'll be consolidating the three day session so, so the feedback will be posted tomorrow so we have noted the attendance of the zoom participants and also the youtube participants so please do join us tomorrow at 9:50